1950, famous computer science Alan Turing proposed a test that we could use to determine if computers could possess intelligence. The test is pretty simple. You're in one room and you're allowed to communicate using some kind of text interface with some entity in another room. And you don't know if that entity is a computer or a person. And you're allowed to have a conversation and the goal is to be able to determine whether or not that entity is a computer or a person. And if you can't tell the difference, then that entity is determined to be intelligent. So probably one of the things we're going to see in the future is the rise of artificial intelligence. We're already seeing this, and we're already seeing this in many ways online. And probably some of the first places we're going to encounter artificial intelligence is online. You can actually already encounter artificial intelligence online. So I'm going to go over here to this window, and I'm going to engage in a chat session. So uh, I'm chatting with Alice, um, and you can find Alice online. I'll say hello. And Alice says, hi there. I can say, what's your name? Uh, the, her name is Alice. Um, I'll introduce myself. That's always polite. Uh, she says, that's a very nice name. Oh, I, I always thought so. Uh, say that. Uh, so did my mom. Um, I'm not certain whether I can give an accurate reply or not. Um, interesting. OK, well, it's possible that I have just caused this computer to fail the Turing test, but uh, let's, let's try to sort of continue on here. Uh, what are you doing? I'll ask Alice. Alice says, that's not something I get asked all the time. Really? That's a pretty common question. Um, ah, perhaps <laughs> you have a common answer. So. So these, this, is, this is obviously not a, uh, a person. A person probably wouldn't have uh, reacted this particular way. So if you chat with one of these AI uh, chatbots for long enough, you can probably get them to say something strange and something that would reveal that they're actually a computer as opposed to a human. But this is going to be kind of fun. And actually, uh, they've done some studies that show that people that it can engage uh, in conversations like this with bots that are programmed to sort of act like therapists. So there are websites you can go to with sort of AI therapists. And the therapist will sort of ask you a series of uh, very open-ended questions about how you're feeling. And you know, why don't you tell me more about that? Kind of the same way that an actual therapist would that you would have to pay you know 200 bucks an hour or whatever um, and but it turns out that actually interacting with those robotic therapists is something that people can actually really find therapeutic human beings can find that therapeutic and so I think you know one of the exciting uh, things that we're going to see in the future is this idea of computers becoming more intelligent I think it's a long way before we see computers that are going to sort of be able to act independently but certainly computers are going to make big strides in being able to mimic human uh, human behavior. We've also seen this um, in terms of computers playing games. I'm going to ask Alice, um, do you know that a computer can play Go? Um, what is she going to say? I am a computer, so I know what you mean. Okay, well, she's just admitted that she's a computer. Um, one of the things that we've been able to teach computers to do over the past couple decades that's been quite interesting is, is to play games. Um, so obviously back in the 80s you had uh, computers, 80s and 90s had computers that we were developing to play chess. Eventually we were able to beat grandmasters at chess. And now um, in many ways computer performance, human performance at chess is graded based on how a computer would have played because computers can easily beat you know, the most skilled human players at a game like chess. We're actually seeing this uh, in terms of a game called Go as well, which is a game that's much more complicated than chess, but computers are starting to learn how to play that game as well. Um, We've seen Watson be able to uh, play Jeopardy and beat human Jeopardy champions. Um, and this is not just idle uh, sort of ness. I think sometimes people look at computers playing games and they kind of think this is kind of silly. Why are we spending all this time doing this? But game playing requires a great deal of creativity and a great deal of, of thinking. And on some level, our ability to, to teach computers how to play a game. So the fact that a computer can play Go is maybe not interesting unless you play Go yourself. But the fact that a computer can play Go and play Go well is actually interesting in a lot of ways as a planning problem. So it implies that computers be able to, be able to drive cars, which we're already 
seen them be able to do it. And it, it, it sort of implies that computers can handle other sort of complex situations on their own, which is pretty exciting. Um, so, you know, again, you can find Alice, you can find, um, let's see, let me ask Alice, are you a therapist? Um, no. Um, can you help me out? Can you help me? I have a problem. Uh, what kind of help would you like? A very serious problem? Uh, serious help with my serious problem. I am very logical and rational. That is probably very true. So anyway, you can find these online. You can play around with them a little bit. You know, bots have started to get in trouble. There was a story recently about a Microsoft chatbot that sort of went berserk and people taught it to say all sorts of mean things and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, this is something that we're going to see more and more. We already see limited forms of artificial intelligence online in terms of, you know, how the Internet reacts to us. But I think more and more we're going to be interacting in certain ways, in very human ways, with entities that are actually computers. And a lot of that will probably start online although we're going to see it more and more in the environment around us as well.